human ear. Ear is the organ which is responsible for hearing as well as it also helps in maintaining balance of the body. Human ear is divided into three main regions. They are the external ear, middle ear as well as the inner ear. Coming to the anatomy of ear, you can see what are the parts which are present in the external ear, middle ear and inner ear. External ear includes the auricle, the pinna, ear pinna which is present as well as ear pinna is opened into external auditory canal and ended with the tympanum membrane or simply we call it as ear drum. And now the second part of the ear is middle ear which includes the ear ossicles or auditory ossicles, oval window as well as eustachian tubes. Inner ear includes the three that is semicircular canals, vestibule as well as cochlea. Ear consists of three regions. They are the outer ear, middle ear and inner ear. Now in the picture you can clearly see the three regions of the ear. Outer ear consists of the ear pinna. And this is consisting of an external auditory meters for receiving the sound. And this externally auditory meters is opened into ear drum. The ear drum is ended with a membrane called as tympanum membrane. And it goes into the next part of the ear that is the middle ear. Middle ear consists of auditory ossicles or ear ossicles as well as it also includes the oval window as well as the eustachian tubes. These three are included in middle ear. Inner ear consists of semicircular canals, vestibule as well as cochlea. Now coming to the detailed description of external ear. External ear consists of the auricle, Okay, so here you can see this is the auricle or ear pinna. External auditory canal for receiving the sound. And it is opened into the tympanum membrane or ear drum. And now coming to this auricle or pinna, it is a cartilaginous flap which is made up of elastic fibers. It is again covered by the skin. The rim of the auricle is called as, this rim of the auricle is called as helix. An inferior portion is called as, this inferior portion is called as lobule and this play a key role in receiving the sound vibration and this is opened into external auditory canal. External auditory canal consists of a tube which is of 2.5 cm long. So this is uh, the external auditory canal. Near this external opening the auditory canal contains a few hairs as well as the ceruminous gland for producing wax are pre present. The combination of a hair as well as the ceruminous glands help in preventing the entry of dust particles or foreign objects into the ear. The last it is being ended in the form of tympanum membrane. Okay or simply we can call it as ear drum. It is also semi-transparent partition between the external auditory canal as well as the middle ear. It is covered by epidermis and made up of simple cuboidal epithelium. This eardrum helps in amplification of sound. Now going into the next part of the ear, it is the middle ear. It is the small air-filled cavity which is present in the temporal bone and is lined by the epithelium. It is being separated from external ear by tympanum membrane or ear drum. And towards the inner ear, it is being uh, ended by the oval window. The parts which are included in middle ear are ear ossicles or auditory ossicles, oval window and eustachian tube. Ear ossicles or auditory ossicles. There are three delicate bones which are being present in the middle ear. They are malus, incus and stips. Okay, so 
these are connected by synovial joints the ma malus is a hammer shape incus is also called as anvil steps is called as tira this ossicle act as lever system increasing the force of vibration that is they act as mini ampli amplifiers the tympanum membrane amplifies the sound they are being received by this bone with increased amplification and they are next sent into the inner ear now the malus is being derived from the latin word which means a hammer so this is the first bone of middle ear the handle of the malus is attached within the internal surface of the ear drum the head of the malus is attached with the body of incus the primary function of the malus is transmission of sound waves or vibration from ear drum that is tympanum membrane to the next bone that is incus and it is the incus is the second bone and this is located in between malus and stem the incus also helps in transmission of a vibration from malus to stems stems is the third and final bone of the middle ear it is the smallest and lightest bone of the human body the stem connects uh, the incus on the outward side uh, to the oval window the primary function of stems is transmitting sound waves from incus to the membrane of inner ear the base or foot plate of the uh, stems is fitting into the oval window so this is the structure of the auditory ossicles where we can see the hammer like structure that is the malus okay oh, this is the malus and uh, the next part is the incus and after incus it is the stems this base of the stem is attached to oval window the major function of this is the sound which is amplified from the ear drum or the tympanum membrane is sent into the malus and the malus to incus incus to stems and from the stems it is sent into the inner ear with a opening called as oval window now coming to the oval window here you can see okay this is the ear drum or the tympanum membrane where there is amplification of sound afterwards it is being received by the three auditory ossicles malus incus and stems finally the base of stems is attached to the oval window so the oval window is also a membrane covered opening that leads the middle ear to the inner ear vestibule of inner ear the oval window is the middle region which is present in between the middle ear as well as inner ear it is directly in contact with the stems by the time vibrations reach the oval window they have been amplified over 10 times from that they were when they contacted with the tympanum membrane and now the last part of the middle ear is eustachian tube this is also an air filled space it consists of both the bone as well as hyaline cartilage this runs from middle ear to the nasopharynx behind the nose it is closed at the pharyngeal end during swallowing and chewing and aning it opens it helps in maintaining air pressure on two sides of the ear towards the inner ear as well as external ear if pressure disturbed hinders clear and normal hearing now going into the inner ear it is also called as labyrinth the labyrinth is a network of the tissue which is present in the bony case it consists of two regions they are the outer bony labyrinth and inner bony labyrinth okay now here if you see uh, this is the inner ear and this inner ear is enclosed in a bony structure so it is having the bony part as well as the membranous covering so the outer bony part bony labyrinth of inner ear is the series of cavities which are present in the temporal bone it is also consisting of three regions they are the semicircular canals vestibule and cochlea the bony labyrinth is filled uh, by a fluid called as peri uh, perilymph 
which is similar to that of cerebrospinal fluid. And now the inner membranous labyrinth, it is also consisting of series of sacs and tubes inside the bony labyrinth. So here it is also lined by epithelium. It is filled by a fluid called as endolymph. So this potassium ions generation, generates the auditory signals. Membranous labyrinth consists of two sacs. They are utricle and succule. We will be discussing about in detail about each and every part of the inner ear. So coming to the outer bony labyrinth, we said it consists of semicircular canals and they are named as anterior semicircular canals, posterior semicircular canals and lateral semicircular canals. So this is the anterior one. Okay, this is the posterior one and this is the lateral semicircular canal. And each opening, it is having a bulged structure and this structure, we call it as ampulla. Okay, and now this uh, uh, the swollen enlargement is called as ampulla. The next part is the vestibule. This vestibule is the central part and this lies in between the cochlea. So this is the vestibule region. Okay, and this lies in between the cochlea as well as the semicircular canals. Okay, it contains, consists of the two regions. They are the utricle and succule. The walls of both succule and utricle consists of, again, a small region called as macula. Okay, the dense region which is being present here is called as macula. And they contain the receptor for maintaining equilibrium. They maintain posture and balance. And this maculae consists of hair cells as well as supporting cells. The third part of the inner ear is cochlea, which is of a snail shape. The bony spinal canal uh, is divided into three channels. They are the cochlear duct, scalar vestibule and scalar tympani. So here this uh, uh, coiled structure or snail shaped structure is called as cochlea and it have the three uh, regions. They are the cochlear duct, scalar vestibule and scalar tympani. Now when we observe the cross section of a cochlea, we can notice the three regions. Now, if you make a small cross-section of this cochlea and observe, we can see the detailed description of cochlea and what are the parts which are present in it. Now, here the cochlea consists of three regions. They are scala vestibule, scala media and scala tympani. So, the scala vestibule and the scala media are being separated by a membrane called as resinous membrane. And in the same way, the scala media and scala tympani are being separated by a membrane called as basilar membrane. Now, here the scala vestibule as well as uh, uh, the scala tympani are being filled up by perilymph. And the scala media is filled up by endolymph. So, these two are being filled up by perilymph. Okay, this is also filled up by perilymph. But the scala media is filled up by endolymph. Now, here on to the basilar membrane. It consists of the hair-like structures. And this arrangement is called as organs of corti. It have the network of supporting cells as well as the hair cells which receive the sound vibrations. Finally, the organs of corti is innervated with the auditory nerve which receives the sound vibrations. So, from the organs of corti, the sound vibrations are being sent into the cochlear nerve or the auditory nerve. So, auditory organs of corti, these are also known as the spiral organs. It is also having the coiled sheet of epithelial cells which includes the supporting cells and hair cells. There are two groups of hair cells. They are the outer hair cell and the inner hair cells. And they receive the sound vibration and transfer that to the auditory nerve. 
so here these are the organs of corte these are the cells the hair cells which are responsible for receiving the sound vibrations finally they are being sent into the cochlear nerve organs of corte consists of neurons called as a hair cells they acts on so form the uh, the cranial nerve eight and the stapes is attached to the oval window and vibrations causes the perilymph to vibrate perilymph is present in scala media scala vestibule and scala tympani and they help in causing vibration and these vibrations are received by the hair cells and transmitted these vibrations therefore the hair cells from this region acts as a receptors of hearing and transfer that to the vestibular cochlear nerve which is the cranial nerve 8 which takes the signal to the brain therefore the cochlea is where hearing receptors are located so the cochlea is responsible for all the hearing of sounds however the ear does not does more than just hear it is also responsible for balance and equilibrium so coming to the physiology of hearing Firstly the first part of the external ear is the auricle or pinna directs the sound waves into the external auditory canal from the external auditory canal the sound is amplified at ear drum and this go into the middle ear which causes the vibration of malus incus and stape and they also help in amplification of sound and from the stapes it is being attached to oval window by the time it reaches the oval window the sound is amplified at 10 times more from that of ear drum the oval window now stimulate the pressure waves in the perilymph the perilymph now transmit the vibrations to the organs of corti the organs of corti through perilymph and endolymph uh, receives the impulse and finally this is being transferred to the eighth cranial nerve and reached to the brain which is present in the temporal now here you can see the route of passage of sound vibrations from the oval window into the inner ear so it goes into the scala vestibule scala vestibule to scala uh, media and the scala tympani so it causes the vibrations in the perilymph and endolymph finally the vibrations are being received by organs of corti and transmitted to the eighth cranial nerve so the vestibular system is also helps in regulating balance to the body here it consists of the semicircular canals anterior posterior and lateral canals are being present and within the semicircular canal the endolymph is present and the hair cells are also innervated uh, into it and they also help in receiving uh, the information from the semicircular canals and that go into the cerebellum the vestibule consists of the two regions they are the utricle and saccule in the diagram you can see this uh, uh, vestibule is present in between the cochlea as well as semicircular canals so these regions are called as utricle as well as vestibule they lie perpendicular to each other both this utricle and saccule together they are called as otolith organs now this each utricle and saccule have a small thickened region it uh, here it is called as macula and this uh, macula is uh, having uh, the deposition of calcium carbonate crystals called as otoliths so here onto the mac macula it consists of calcium carbonate uh, deposition called as otoliths which are form the otolith membrane otoliths extend over all the otolith membrane these are the tiny crystals which respond to the pull of gravity they are moving towards the gravity okay and that helps in moving the head if we are moving the head in this directions the sound vibrations can be received with the help of this uh, uh, otolith otoliths which are present above the macula If you like the video share and subscribe this is Pravalika signing off